In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have to understand, my beloved Orthodox Christians, that in the Holy Faith, in our Holy Orthodox Church, in the True Church, everyone who is a martyr is automatically considered a saint. And there's a reason for this. We have to understand that martyrs never become martyrs coincidentally. It's not an accident. It's because the martyr is a chosen vessel of the Holy Spirit who has been, been prepared to receive the great gift of a martyr's crown. It takes much more than a courageous soul or a noble spirit. It takes someone who has God in his heart. And we know that there are many stars in the sky, and the stars differ in their brightness and their brilliance. Some of them are brighter than others. And we liken this to the saints. And the fathers talk about Christ being the sun of righteousness, the mother of God being like the moon, the reflection of that brightness coming from the sun, and the stars also having that reflection coming from God who is in them. And today we celebrate a great star, <laughs> one of the most beloved of the saints of our Holy Church, Holy, great, glorious, great martyr Demetrius, the Merschimer, who God has glorified. For our Lord says, I will glorify those who glorify me. The oldest church that exists in the entire world, built over the place of a martyr, is the Church of St. Demetrius. This is called a martyrium. And we lost it for a few centuries when we were under the Ottoman Empire. And in 1912, there was a fire in Thessaloniki, and most of the city was burned. Even at the church of St. Demetrius, there was some damage which was made. The floor collapsed. When the floor collapsed, they found that the prison was underneath the church, right underneath the altar, which had the pool which gathered all the myrrh, which came from the side of the saint. And this is very significant. Pay attention to the side of the saint and the myrrh. This was an amazing person because he was a young man who was actually a governor. In the service to St. Philip, the almsgiver, we chant, it's no great thing, it's no great wonder if a monastic somehow achieves sanctity, if he becomes a saint. But in a common layman, it seems difficult, although we have many saints who are lay people. But these lay people were totally dedicated to God. And St. Demetrius received the faith from his parents, but they were hidden Christians. And the governor did not know that St. Demetrius was a Christian. The emperor did not know that St. Demetrius was a Christian, and so he was elevated to the rank of governor. But St. Demetrius had a strategy. He was very intelligent, very smart. He had already gained the grace of the Holy Spirit. He had already gained a great deal of sanctity. And then he was put in this position of authority. Oftentimes, governors... And people in authority in general can be blinded by the honor and the authority, especially if they are not Christians and especially if they don't have the understanding of the lowliness of mankind and the nothingness of mankind in the sight of God. But as a governor, he took advantage of his position and he started preaching. As St. Gregor Palma says, he was a second Paul. He was a and equal to the apostles. If we were to have gathered all of his sermons, we'd have volumes of books. But it's an unfortunate fact that we don't have too much information from the life of St. Demetrius. But the saints live unto the ages, and so they are alive to us, and they live forever in Christ Jesus. So, after the emperor found out that he was a Christian, he was put in prison. And Nestor, who was one of his disciples, went to the prison to receive his blessing. 
This is also very interesting because, as we said, St. Demetrius was neither a monk nor a clergyman. <coughs> but Nestor went to St. Demetrius to receive his blessing to fight Lieos. Lieos was a gladiator. He was someone who killed Christians. And in those days, one of the means of entertainment was to see people getting killed. That was the horrible pagan culture that they lived in. And people would go and watch this, and the Aeos killed so many. It was an impossible situation from human standards. It was like David and Goliath, Nestor and Laos. But he went to St. Demetrius and received his blessing. And St. Demetrius told him, you will prevail, but you also will be martyred. Again, something very significant, because we have to read in between the lines and look a little more deeply into the life of the saint. For someone who is a layman, who is a governor, who is around 36, year old, 36 years old, to prophesy means that he had already attained great heights. Here we see our old men who have lived in the Orthodox faith for so many years, and they still have trouble discerning things for themselves. But this was a young man who had prophesied. It means that most likely he was a great ascetic, he kept light, night-long vigils. He fasted strictly. And he knew that he was going to be martyred. He prepared himself. There was no way that he could preach Christ as a governor and not be killed for it. And finally the time came when they were to kill him, especially when the emperor found out that Lieos, his good friend, was killed by... Nestor, he was furious. But how did Nestor kill Laos? Very simply, as we said, like David and Goliath, with one prayer, O God of Demetrius, help me. O God of Demetrius, save me. Oftentimes we find this very meaningful, particularly for the monastics, but for all Christians. We're not Protestants. And in our American culture, sometimes people like to Protestantize. Even pious Orthodox Christians, unfortunately, have been so affected by Protestant culture that we have this thing where it's just me and Jesus. No, that's not how the church is structured. The church is structured a certain way, and it's divinely inspired, and it's been set by our Savior. And if some human being abuses that structure, it doesn't mean that the structure is not in place. And that structure will always be in place. And that's why we have confessors. We go and confess. We have spiritual fathers. We have priests. We have bishops. We have synods. And so Nestor put himself under his elder, under his mentor, St. Demetrius. And so he understood that his connection with God was Demetrius. And that's why he said, O God of Demetrius, help me. <clears throat> this is humility. And humility prevails. Last night when we chanted the Polyelos, we chanted, to kirio, or give thanks unto the Lord. And one of the verses we said, for in our humility the Lord remembered us. And the subsequent verse, and delivered us from our enemies. For the devil hates humility. And so this is why humility is the cloak which our Savior Jesus Christ put upon himself. That's how he became a man. He humbled himself to death, even the death of the cross. But then when they came with spears to martyr St. Demetrius, he lifted up his arm, having in remembrance the piercing of the lance of our Savior, at the crucifixion. This is not just a simple thing that he did. This indicates that he had theoria, he had divine vision. He had a concept and an understanding of the sufferings of Christ. The Holy Fathers, when they pray, would exercise their mind and their heart before they would go deep, more deeply into prayer. 
and we should all utilize those exercises which help give wings to prayer. First is the remembrance of death. Again, in our society, we are taught to live here as if we're going to be here forever. You've heard me say it many times, and you'll probably hear me say it many more times. We all get affected by that. We buy things. We want a new car or our homes or whatever. But here, moth and rust doth corrupt. Everything is going to pass. So we should always pray remembering that we are just another insignificant Joe, if you like, as they say in the simple uh, language here. We're, just, we're all just another person passing by in history. And the time will pass very fast. And the other thing which St. Demetrius had, the real divine vision, was concerning the sufferings of our Savior Jesus Christ. He delved deeply into the meaning, and he had vision. The saints all had a connection with the sufferings of Jesus Christ. For our Savior says, whoever wishes to follow me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. We say, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, but then when the difficult time comes, we don't want to pick up the cross. But these saints very readily did. And so, I remember one time, an instance in the life of St. Nectarius. Remember, St. Nectarius was slandered. That's one of the lots of the saints. They get slandered. And so he was slandered. And he went to church in Evia. And they started screaming at him during his sermon. Can you imagine, as if now I'm talking to you, and a few people in the congregation start screaming, get out of here, Pharisee. They called him a Pharisee. Don't judge. Be careful. You never know who you might be judging. And they accused him of one thing and another thing and another thing. And of course, he was shaken. And he skipped a few pages, got to the end of his sermon, and he went inside the sanctuary and sat on the seat. And the priest said, Your eminence, you'll have to forgive the people because your bad reputation has followed you here. And then he went to his cell, to his room, and as a man, he started weeping. He was crushed. Because this happened week after week. And finally, in his humiliation, where the Lord remembered him, he looked up at the cross, he looked up at the icon of the crucifixion, and he heard an inner voice, I suffered this for you. Can you not also suffer? For me? For whosoever wishes to follow me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. And as I said many other times, St. Macarius of Egypt says, Christ suffered all these things for you. You can't suffer those things for your own self. We shouldn't have cell phones in the church. Please take off your cell phone. And this is the lot of the saints. But you see, this is how St. Ictarius connected with the sufferings of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And this is how all the saints, the martyrs, connected. And we all should have the remembrance of those sufferings. Before you say your prayers at night, sit down for a few minutes. Light your candili. Turn off the lights, because the Father says the darkness can help concentrate the mind and the heart. It can collect our thoughts. And have an icon there of the crucifixion of our Savior, and take a look at the icon. Just spend some time looking at the icon, which icons are called windows to heaven. And give yourself a little bit of time to be enlightened and soften your heart. That's how the saints learned how to pray. So St. Demetrius utilized this and much more. He was deep, much deeper in all this understanding. As we said, he was an equal to the apostles, he was clairvoyant. He was a prophet. He was a 36-year-old governor. And he had all these gifts. And he was martyred with such joy. Can you imagine? So much, so prothimo, so willing to receive that martyrdom. 
that he lifted up his arm in imitation of Christ in the amazing thing which we heard last night in the service in the mountains, thou wast equal to Christ in the piercing of thy side. How can, anybody, how can anyone become equal to Christ? Well, we must understand what the hymnographer says. And St. Paul tells us, ye are gods. Be ye gods. And so those who connect with Christ in such a manner are honored by him. It's amazing that our Savior wants to honor us so much. And so these are of his kind. And after that, his servant, Lupus, gathered soil and blood from the spot that St. Demetrius was martyred. And one of the relics that we have here is from the soil, that soil, and blood and myrrh, which was mixed in a... And it was underneath the, the altar. As we said, there was a fire in 1912. It was underneath the altar table because it was consecrated over that relic. We have that, and we also have from the bone of the saint. After his martyrdom, great miracles happened, and myrrh gushed from his side. From that, that spot, that same spot that we said, where he had divine vision, where, where he had the remembrance of the sufferings of Jesus Christ. So let us look at his example, and let us understand that St. Demetrius is with us today. And we look here at his holy icon, and we see here his holy relic. The greatest treasures of the Orthodox Christians are the relics of the saints. We should bow before them and kiss them with great reverence. And we smell the myrrh, which comes from the relics of the saint. And there was so much myrrh that there were even vessels found in faraway Ireland of myrrh from St. Demetrius from the early centuries. And in the Akulathia, in the service, it says, and now the faithful are anointed with the myrrh. There was so much myrrh. There was a whole pool, as we said, underneath the altar. And now we can noetically be anointed with the myrrh from St. Demetrius, since we ask for that in the prayers also. And that myrrh comes from his purity. And he is a saint that we can all turn to in the difficulties of this life, in all of our other challenges that we have to deal with. And let us take this opportunity, as, we, as I mentioned in Greek, I want, I'm very happy that many of you are here, and some of you are here to uh, honor my person. I'd rather you honor St. Demetrius. Take this opportunity to Connect with him personally. Our archpastoral blessings you all have, but the great grace which comes from Demetrius is very different from what any of us can offer. Connect with him. You'll see something different in yourselves. And now I remind you again, every time we're in the liturgy, the saints are with us, and it's easier than you think for us to actually pray. And if we had the, the spiritual eyes to see, we would see among us many angels and saints. But today, the host of our feast is St. Demetrius. He has a special place this day. Let us all turn to him and ask, Holy, glorious, great martyr Demetrius, protect our sacred metropolis, our church, our monasteries, our parishes, our homes, our families, our people. And we ask of one gift in particular, mercy. Ask the Lord to give us his mercy, to cover us under his mercy. For St. Isaac the Syrian says, if we come to true understanding, we will understand what our Savior says and what our Savior means when he says, seek ye first the kingdom of the heavens and all else shall be added to you. When we say, Lord, have mercy, we are essentially seeking first the heavenly kingdom, and everything else will be added to us, whatever God wills for us. May we all come under the will of God, follow his holy will, and may the mercy of God overshadow us 
May he cover us. May he protect us by the prayers of the holy, glorious, great martyr, Demetrius. And may the holy, great martyr, Demetrius, stand in our midst and hear all of our supplications and our petitions which are unto salvation and life everlasting. Let us honor him today, even as our Savior wishes, to whom be glory, majesty, and adoration unto the ages of ages. Amen. <laughs>